Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. All right, welcome to Tales from the Flipside for another pro spec list. Um, let's go ahead and get started. At number 15, we have Moon Knight Annual number one. So not only is this a JTC cover, it's also a Killer Kane cover, but many new Moon Knights appear, and it rede redefines Kane's rel relationship to Moon Knight's God. At number 14, we have Iron Patriot number three, the variant. Now, this is just a, a cool cover. This is uh, Greg Land at his best. Yeah, I guess that's Rhodey. Could be Riri, but I guess it's Rhodey. And uh, with the badass heads up display uh, inside, uh, I guess, War Machine. But, uh, you know, with the Armor Wars coming, coming soon. Uh, this this may be a sleeper a sleeper book. Uh, I think uh, Don Cheadle uh, reprising his his role as War Machine. He's a, he's a hell of an actor. He's a, a an award winner. So uh, I think a People's Choice Award winner for for best uh, best kiss or something like that. The Kids Choice or something like that. But I I uh, I, I I dig the cover. I think. Uh, this uh, for collectors of Iron Man and 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 um, anything dealing with Riri or War Machine. This this might be a good pickup. Yeah, Joe. Um, the recent Captain Marvel um, issue. There's a one in twenty five of on the cover of Rhodey and um, Captain Marvel. You know, kind of uh, getting familiar with each other, getting close to each other. Um, so because they're dating currently in the uh, current run of Captain Marvel. For our number 13 book, we have Avengers Classic number eight. Yeah, so I had picked this book to be on, on, on this list uh, last week, but it ended up on uh, another top 10. I guess uh, they beat me to it, but I found this book out in the wild, and I thought, well, let me go ahead and submit this. Uh, you know, in the guts of it is is uh, it, it's a reprint of Avengers number eight, the uh, first Kang, right? So, uh, you know, one thing, you know, we're uh, scouring everywhere looking for the coolest Kang covers because, you know, quite frankly, nobody's really done a, a great job in drawing Kang. So this was kind of different. He has his hand out like like uh, Michael Turner kind of esque. That's the way Michael Turner would would draw his his characters. Yeah. And uh it just pops right out of the out of the comic, so it is so different. And uh, if you look at the Kang cover, uh, you know the Silver Age version, it's shit. You know, uh, you just see like kind of the back of Kang, and this is a little more intense. Uh, you see Giant Man and Iron Man and Cap, and you know you get a whole feel of uh, the intensity of this book. So. Um, yeah, I, I this if you can find it out there in the wild, this book's going for about forty bucks right now. Uh, you know, honestly, I could so see this book because the other book is we're getting priced out of it. I could see this book slabbed uh, at about three hundred bucks and a hundred bucks raw, and that's just where the the market is. You you get a high grade copy of this, uh, send it in to get graded. So make sure to keep your eyes open in those back issue bins and. Check out those con dealers that haven't updated their pricing. At number 12, we have Astonishing X-Men number 10, any cover. So um, this was a good pick. Shout out to my boy, Phil Lee, VintageComicsAndToys.com. Um, in the guts of this book, we have the first team appearance in full of S.W.O.R.D. And we also have a first appearance of uh, Sidron. Um the reason why he liked this pick was, you know, the team showed up in WandaVision, as you guys know. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it by now, sorry, no spoiler alert. So, um, but anyways, uh, yeah, and, and he believes that uh, we'll see the S.W.O.R.D. team again in upcoming projects in the MCU. Um, definitely, or a very good chance it'll happen in Secret Invasions or anytime there's like a scroll invasion live action. So good pick, Phil. A nice negative space cover. At number 11, we have Incredible Hulk number 418. 
Speaking of scrolls, uh, despite this terrible cover, <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, uh, I mean, Rick Jones <laughs> with, with, with the ponytail, and uh, there, there's just nothing. Uh, there's not much to like here, but it does have <laughs> the first. Uh, appearance, well, we'll say early appearance of Talos, the earliest known appearance. Uh, he, he's one of the guests at the wedding, and he, he has to be separated from arguing with a, a, a Cree uh, by the Silver Surfer. But it, it's a really brief appearance. Uh, but as we know, uh, Talos is a recurring character in the MCU. He played a major role in Captain Marvel, and even though we didn't know it most of this time, speaking of spoilers, uh, you know, he was impersonating Nick Fury in Spider-Man Far From Home. And so he's going to uh, appear again in Secret Invasion on Disney+. Plus. The, the big question is, will he appear, what will he appear, appear in before that? I mean, could, will we see him in any mid-credit, post-credit scenes? Uh, or and will we see him afterwards after Secret Invasion? So this is uh, an interesting early first appearance that everyone's sort of forgotten about. And I mean, he's a very likable character, an interesting character. And Steve, he can I still agree find with you. A couple bucks. Yeah, I I agree with you. Remember um, earlier when we joined the team together, we talked about this book how. It, you know, it's not getting a lo enough love. And, you know, we are aware there are a lot of copies of this book out in the wild. But, um, you know, and he's the cover a pretty, is terrible. and the cover covers terrible. And this is the what collector's edition. And then you have the other edition. So, you know, but, you know, it is the first appearance of a, of a character that has a solid base in the MCU from the past and going forward. I think it was a good play and great pick, Steve. Thanks. At number 10, we have all new Hawkeye, number five, the manga variant. So this was Tony's pick. This is just a, a cool cover, a cool variant that is hard to find. It's just plain uh, cool. So it was a qualifier. You had to match or exceed orders for, uh, compared to issue number two. So it's not the easiest qualifier to meet because the orders usually drop during the first six issues. So this was during the uh, month where Marvel put out all those manga variants like X-Men 92, the bubble gum variant and some of those <laughs> uh, others. And, and I know how hard this is to find. I think I found two copies out in the wild. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And, you know, we have the Hawkeye show. We just got the announcement this week, what, it's premiering in November. So uh, you've got a couple months to, to, to find these, but right now they're going from 40 to $60. Damn. Yeah, so the other night we were talking about this on Drunken Chat, like that Marvel and DC are maybe even talking about looking into doing like more anime stuff. So I think these early anime covers or manga covers are great pickups. So we'll see like what happens in the future because, you know, anime is not slowing down anytime soon. It's really interesting. You bring that up because back in, I want to say 2006 DC acquired a manga company and they had their own imprint CMX. And then I think the the manga market took a dip and it went away. It, it's just interesting to see how things kind of like that's tide, you know, things things roll out and come back in. Coming in at number nine, we have Witty World number one. So uh, this is a pretty cool magazine that's submitted by uh, Phil. And it has the iconic Albeda number two and Yusagi Yojimbo number one on the cover with Stan Sakai in his sketch room. Um, it's a tough black frame cover. Uh, cool how they played homage to popular cover art in these editorial magazines. So this is the first time uh, Albeda number two and Yusagi Yojimbo number one appear on a cover since their first publishing. 
at number eight, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 17. So on the cover and in story, we have the first appearance of um, Francine Fry as Electro. And this particular uh, type or iteration of Electro is, if you couldn't tell by the name, is a woman. Um, women are on the forefront. They are, um, you know, basically taking taking the MCU by storm. Um, I thought this was actually a great pick by Carter Mercenot. And if you're not following Mercenot, just like it sounds, Mercenot on YouTube, check him out. He has great pickup videos. But uh, yeah, I mean, right now, Aaron, this book can be found on the secondary market and in back issue bins for between a dollar to uh, a, a max of 20. Um, but, you know, when I looked on online at the, the prices on this book, I, I didn't see any over six or seven dollars. And I think this is a great pick also because, you know, she's a part of the new Sinister Six that actually battles Miles Morales down the line. And I believe Earth 1610, um, the ultimate universe. But yeah, you know, and on top of that, you had the second print copy that has that's super hard to find. Also, it has a beautiful blue um, border that um, you should be on the lookout for. And cool. At number seven, we have the Incredible Hulk number 419. So in comparison with 418, this is a vast improvement. So you, you, you get Talos on the cover and and basically the entire issue is hulk and talos just beating the hell out of one another so this is i guess what a lot of people would consider a first full appearance and a first cover appearance and and all those uh terminology that we all get wrapped around the axle about um so no need to repeat myself about talos's role in the mcu you know he he's going to be a player and you know, people just have short memories. Uh, that that's really what it uh, you chalk it up to. You know, the um, his last appearance in Far From Home, you know, was uh, you know pre COVID, right? So a couple of years ago. So he's just fallen fallen off the radar. And yeah, this had a high print run, but uh, all that. I there's just no way a Secret Invasion approaches. And he's featured in the marketing and everything. There's no way this book doesn't get a bump. And we'll see what happens after Secret Invasion if he sticks around. Uh, and also in between, I, I, I've just got a sneaking suspicion we'll see him at least one time in something uh, surprising because of the shape-shifting nature of, of scrolls. Of course, the weird thing in 419 is... Uh, Talos is unable to shapeshift, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I just wanted to make one more note on 418. There is an ash can for 418. I have that ash can, and I can confirm he does not appear in the ash can for 418. So there's no real reason to covet that ash can with that lovely cover. Also, <laughs> that ash can is water damaged, just to confirm. <laughs> at number six we have ron 31 on this cover we have the first cover appearance in full of rogue now i understand that rogue is on the cover of avengers annual 10 you know her little little pea face um, which, you know, is better than nothing. So this issue, though, what's unique about this one compared to the Uncanny X-Men uh, 158, Aaron, is, is that this is the first time she's shown on the cover in full outside of an X-Men title. And, and, and that's interesting because, you know, she's so, you know, intertwined with X-Men. And, you know, like I said, the Avengers Annual 10, it's a great book. It's definitely a modern grail. 
or I'm sorry, a Bronze Age grill, excuse me. And, uh, you know, it's definitely one to keep long term. But if you're into cover appearances and, and seeing a character for the first time, especially a character like Rogue, who, in my opinion, will be, um, you know, casted and could have a long life in live action in the MCU. But if you like that and it's outside of an Uncanny X-Men and Avengers Annual 10 titles, then this is your book. I mean, I've seen this book, Aaron, for as low as like four or five dollars in mid grade. I've seen high grade copies of this book going for about twenty five dollars. I think this is a sneaky, sneaky play. At number five, we have Sandman number 13. Yeah, this Thanks. is uh, an interesting book. First of all, I was not on Sandman titles until our boy Nico got me on to Sandman titles. So I started buying these Sandman titles and found out in this particular issue, we had a first appearance of Joanna Constantine, who is also known as Lady Constantine. Lady Constantine is basically just like she sounds. She's a sorceress, a student of John Constantine. Um, the reason why I like this pick is, you know, with the current reviews on Rotten Tomatoes of Suicide Squad, that could be a pathway towards the DCEU actually, you know, creating some some good live action animation or what have you, basically good movies. And they might start following the trend of the MCU by gender swapping these characters. So, you know, we've already seen John Constantine um, in 2005, which Keanu Reeves was a great great film in in my opinion um it would be nice to have a little bit of change up and instead of john constantine which was reprised by another actor in the tv show um have lady constantine lady joanna constantine show up in you know a future dceu film i i would be very excited for that this book is also a tough book in high grade um, there's not many listings on the secondary market. Um, I a few retailers had it up up above around thirty dollars. You can find a good deal though if you dig in back issue bins because I found many Sandman titles in half price bins, and I bet this one's laying in there somehow. So get off your butt, get off online, and go to your local comic shop. At number four, we have Doctor Strange number eighty one. Most of us are aware of this book. Um, this is your first appearance of Rentra in full. Now, he has a cameo, a first cameo in Doctor Strange 80, which is basically a dollar book. I think that book is flying under the radar. This book has already seen a few bumps. Um, shout out to Key Collector Comics. Um, you know, he's, he's updated some information on that. But... Um, on Reddit, there was a list for the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, or AKA Doctor Strange 2 Funko Pop set that came out, and Rentra was in was on the list. So I don't know if the list I couldn't confirm if the list was was you know confirmed if it was real or not. And a lot of people in the subreddit were saying the same, but there has been heavy rumors that this character would be casted um i think it was like february or march of, of this year um adam hugel was casted in a mystery role and a lot of people are saying that it is this character rentra and uh yeah you know it, a little bit about this character he's an alien and also he's an apprentice to dr strange in the comics will the mcu go um comic similar i don't know we all know how the MCU likes to retcon, but if this character shows up, which I have a good feeling it will, we will soon find out. At number three, we have Avengers World. Number three. See, now here 50, we go. The one in 50 Augustine Alessio variant. All right. So you can't find this. Uh, you can't find a raw copy on eBay for under $150 currently. But the last uh, 9.8 sold for 199 uh, Almost the entire issue is the badass kung fu fight between Shang-Chi and Gorgon, uh, a mutant that can turn anyone into stone with direct eye contact. Shang-Chi knows that about this power and chooses to knock out all 
torches and fight him in the dark. The book reminded me of watching old Child Brothers films. Great martial arts direction, and there's not many great modern covers with Shang-Chi on it. So be on the lookout for this. It's got At that uh, en Enter the Dragon feel, man, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, at number two, we have Thor, Hercules, Encyclopedia, Mythologica, the one shot. So this was a pick by Tony. My understanding is that this is a Marvel uh, Universe or Mar Marvel Handbook type uh, book. The thought is that Gore in the upcoming Thor movie needs gods to butcher because he's the god butcher, right? And I haven't had a chance to look at it myself, but Tony's note says that there are dozens of first appearance gods uh, in this book. So as Gore gores <laughs> all the gods out there, who knows who from this book could possibly be one of the slain or one of their survivors. Uh, it's an interesting pick, and I'd love to get my hands on it. Yeah, I, I, I think he's on the money with that pick. I, I think, I mean, the MCU's got to pick some some uh, some characters for for Gore to annihilate. So uh, definitely, this this could be like something something huge. And for our number one book this week, we have. The Incredible Hulk, number 325, the anniversary frame. So I added this book um, basically because of my partner here, good friend Steve Horn. He was talking about Rick Jones, and Rick Jones was in my mind, you know, along with, you know, She-Hulk series and, you know, the Abomination and, and the Incredible Hulk and all this other stuff. And um, I thought about it, and I said, huh. Well, when it was the first time that Rick Jones became the Hulk, and it was actually in this book, and it's an anniversary frame. Um, also, a while back during that uh, Marvel 9, there was some unannounced live action projects, and among Amadeus Cho, which is Joe's favorite character, and a few others, Rick Jones was a part of these, of these projects that were, quote, unannounced basically not made public so you could you could just chalk it up as a rumor to be in development uh, or character to be in development on top of that you know it's an anniversary frame i don't think these anniversary frames get enough love sure it's not the greatest art in the world but you know these anniversary frames are hard to find plus you have a first appearance in the guts and on top of that, you know, there are marked jewelers, and I believe there are Canadian price variants for this book. If you find a Canadian price variant, it won't say 75 cents. It'll say 95 cents. And the Mark, Jewel, the Mark Jewelers, if it, I could be wrong about the Mark Jewelers. It could be in National Diamond Sales, but I know for sure there's some kind of jewelry store <laughs> insert in the middle. But, yeah, I think this is a good character, and I want to go ahead and hand it off to my boy Steve. He wants to talk a little bit about Rick Jones. Go ahead, Steve. Right. So I've been reading a lot of 70s and 80s Marvel to, to catch up so that I, one day maybe I can live up to the pro spec title and become a professional. But in the meantime, in my amateur status, um, I, you know, I noticed Rick Jones is just pervasive throughout the Marvel comics, uh, especially in the 70s and 80s. He's in Hulk. He's in Captain America. He is uh, in Captain Marvel, and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to rack my brain and figure out where uh, Rick is going to uh, pop up in the MCU. It just seems like such an obvious uh, character for them to to use. So uh, I was I was happy when uh, Rich stepped up to the plate and and said, "Well, here, here's here's an avenue," and uh, yeah, just. Uh, and 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 Rich is right. These 75th anniversary frames uh, don't get enough love, but uh, people love to put these sets together. So there's there's very little downside with this book, at the very least. You and I, I agree, it's not the best art, but.
but still it's a the 75th anniversary covers collectors like them so there's not a whole lot of downside with this well i want to thank everyone for joining us for the prospect list uh make sure to like and subscribe our channel uh, and hit that bell for all the notifications so you don't miss all the great content that happens on this channel and till next time catch you on the flip side iconic